Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I've got another sponsored video for Wilson, um, but I want this, the emphasis of this video to kind of help new players understand Wilson and more so get into the game easier. So we're going to be talking about progression as one of my favorite things. So to get started with Wilson, I want to talk about the bare bone basics for even those people who don't know. So with that being said, if you are playing a melee character in Wilson, there is one thing I will tell you right now to assist you. At the bottom, right here on the screen, there is something called auto dash that you can actually toggle on and toggle off. What auto dash means is if you're using a melee weapon and you're playing a melee and you left click a target, you will automatically dash to them based off of your internal dash cooldown timer. Now, this is good and bad. It's bad because if you're running away and accidentally click, charge into a mob, that's not exactly very good. But it's good for melee as a gap closer. Now, I want to talk about something else in Wilson. So there are a ton of side areas with the new, I believe it's the new, you know, three chapter campaign. Um, so as you're navigating through, you will notice that there will be these green stairs with kind of like a sandy looking area. These, to my knowledge, are pretty much all side areas. If you feel like you're falling behind in gear or in general you like exploration, I highly recommend checking out most of these. The reason why is if you're lucky, um, I do believe it can spawn a vendor and the vendor, I'm pretty sure 100% chance has a unique item or legendary item, which has immense stat bonuses on them that will significantly help you. Especially as an example, um, say you're playing a melee character and you haven't decided if you wanna go two hand uh, or one hand and you end up finding a legendary one hander, it's very easy to build around that, uh, which is just pretty cool. It gives you a sense of direction. I know a lot of people get confused um, when there's just too much going on and they, you know, they they kind of get a little stuck as to how to scale their character. So let me go ahead and hop off. Actually, before I hop off this, I wanna show you guys something else. So on the mini map, when you have uh, enemies marked like this, as you can see here and here. So when a target is marked like this with a yellow, highly recommend going after it. It's kind of like a loot goblin. Uh, it's gonna drop a lot of money. It's gonna drop a lot of loot, usually a lot of skills. Uh, I don't know if this character can kill it. This character is like level two, so it's not exactly, uh, really ideal for fighting stuff. <laughs> this is just to show real fast. So if you look and notice how that guy has that, that tealish bar, that tealish bar is like a, let's call it like armor, right? Basically what it does is when you uh, knock off all of that bar, the target will get stunned. And when the target gets stunned, you can pretty much do free damage. Now this is not really a good example because this thing doesn't really lose much armor. Uh, but anyway, that's just to give you guys a little basic understanding. So I want to go ahead and hop onto my other characters so that I can explain a little bit further into some in-depth mechanics. That's weird. We still have the heartbeat. There we go. It stopped. Okay, perfect. So Wilson, I believe at the moment has three acts with fantastic bosses. Um, the bosses don't they, like they're really tanky. Some of them have multiple phases. Don't worry. It's not invulnerability phases. It's just phases where like the boss dies, cutscene, boss comes back to life, etc., etc. Spoiler warning. Um, all right. So let's talk about some stuff here. When you first get your character started and you make your way and navigate to your first town, there are a few things that I would highly recommend for you to do. The first thing is when you have this person unlocked, which I believe is right away, you want to make sure you talk to them. The reason why is they are going to sell you skills. Now you may not have the gold to purchase one right now, but you will get the gold very quickly. And I know like myself, as an example, when I was playing this character, I was like, man, I only have one skill. And I've been playing for like an hour and every skill I find is for, you know, casters or melee. So you can actually look in this shop. If you don't find something you like, you can just log back out and then restart and do it again. And the reason why this is good is because this allows you to play the build that you want when you want to play it, right? So that's really cool. The skill system in Wilson is very simple yet complex, which is really cool. It takes uh, kind of like, ha has a very similar system to some other games. So if I were to pop up the skill system really fast, you can have all the skills learned, uh, but you can only use the ones that you are specialized in via your weapon type. So I'm a bow user on this character. So if you toggle the bow option here, you can see everything that pops up. It's just nice so you're not always cluttered with a bunch of stuff. When you have a skill on a hotkey, so you know one through four, uh, plus your right click, I don't know if you can put it on left click because that's default, it will gain experience as you gain experience. Um, these modifiers you see here, 
can be removed at any point in time. And I believe every five points, you get one extra modifier point. There's no penalty for respecting it. You just simply left click and that's it. Um, you can see a nice detailed breakdown of the skills on the right. You can see the level scaling and you can see the skill tags along with the attack type. Now the skill tags are important because as an example, um, so let's use this, right? This says Wailing Arrows is skill tag attack. Well, even though it's an arrow, why do we need to know that it is only an attack? Well, uh, as an attack, I don't believe as an example, it would benefit off of this, which is a pretty massive passive for most bow builds, right? So just so you kind of understand how you're scaling your characters, it's very important to read some basic mechanics and features. Now, I wanna talk a little bit more about the um, the skill system. So I'm gonna go back, and not skill system, but the passive tree. So I'm gonna swap and go to my other character because I can actually move it because this character, I guess I could have moved it on that character. That's kind of a mistake, don't worry about that. <clears throat> so Wilson actually promotes party play, which is really cool. A lot of action role playing games don't really have like, I mean, they do have like a support role, but not necessarily the way Wilson has it. More so like, I don't think characters are meant to be supports in other games, and then people end up making them supports and then just the support happens, right? In Wilson, there's actual support nodes specifically all meant towards that, right? So you have passives. Well, pretty much everything here is a passive, right? But you have um, essentially like baby modifiers, like these little small ones. And then you have the larger modifiers, which are the ones with the outline. Usually, if there is something locked behind it like this, it is specifically meant to do exactly what this does, like help it in another type of way, you know, like specialize you a little further. But it's important to kind of read each one and understand. Now, just because you are playing a hunter or a rogue does not mean you need to go green. And if you're playing melee, it doesn't mean you need to go red. And if you're playing a caster, it doesn't mean you need to go purple. As an example, uh, the character I'm playing right now that I think is actually really good is a mixture, right? Because it's doing an ailment build. Ailment meaning I'm applying like debuffs from um, from elemental damage and other sources, uh, and basically trying to ramp that up instead of doing a typical you know crit build as an example. So one of the support nodes I want to go ahead and talk about is let me see if I can find it. It's one of the red ones, which is really nice. Do, 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 do. Is this one? This one. Ah, when your health is below 20%, you make a prayer giving a buff to all the resistance scores of your allies for a few seconds and reviving downed allies. I don't know, that just sounds so cool. When the support gets low life, he reses the whole party. Like that just seems really, really nice. Um, so Wilson's skill system, let me explain a little bit how it works. So when you first start, you've got your inner wheel, that's it. You cannot branch to the next uh, section of the wheel until you have a connector. So if you look here, this is currently my connector. Now say I didn't want to go here, right? Like say I did not want this green block and say I wanted this, right? Well, that kind of sucks because that's kind of far away and I don't really want to path this way and then go, you know, all the way around to get to here. So you know what you can do? You can click the second wheel and you can spin it until you get to the one that you want. Now, naturally, my current build will not work because I don't have a connector, but you know, this is so you can make your own type of character. So you can see here, this would allow me to connect upwards of here. And then you can do it one step further by actually shifting the last wheel, which is really nice. It, it really kind of, it's kind of like picking a class, except it's all passives. So it just augments your play style, which allows you to gear however way that you'd like. So now that that's been explained, I want to talk about uh, the way your willpower and rage work. So I don't really have any willpower on this character, so I can't necessarily show it. But if you look here and notice, just like any other game, rage decays over time and willpower is kind of like your mana. When you use your willpower, it will push to your rage. I don't have anything that spends willpower, so I can't really do that. Um, but what I have on my tree, as an example, if I were to just shift this back, it's gotta shift this one, oopsie daisy. Wait, does that actually, oh yeah, that works, sure. Now, if you'll notice, my willpower is actually turning to my rage without me attacking. The reason why is because I spec here, your willpower regeneration is applied to rage instead. So this is kind of really, really niche, but it's really cool that you can make the character that you want out of this. Next, I wanna talk about the, um, the stats and the resistances. So as a person who's played many action role-playing games, 
some more complex than others. I would like to save you some frustration here so you don't get flustered with it. So, you have four primary stats, ferocity, toughness, agility, and wisdom. To my understanding, it is better to stack one, and the reason why is, if you look down here at the bottom, your total bonus attribute damage, it seems to scale more the more points you have invested. So the complete opposite of diminishing returns. So the more you hybrid, I believe the less damage you're gonna get. That does not mean your build won't work, it's just governing your damage, that's it. Total bonus damage from attributes. Now you can respect your passives on the tree relatively easily. Your attributes are a bit more expensive, but once you start playing the game, it's really not that big of a deal. Just if you're brand new, the attributes are probably gonna hurt you more than the passive tree respec. Now to talk about the four main stats, ferocity, which governs your crit, toughness, which is your health and force shield, force shield being a barrier that buffs and protects your life pool, uh, agility, which is your attack speed and cast speed, and wisdom, which is your chance to apply an ailment and your, oh yeah, your chance for attacks and spells to apply ailments, so both of them together. Now, um, with that being said, Respecting your attributes, the only real reason why you would want to respec your attributes early on or anything is because you want to do like a big respec. So for example, for me, I was playing an auto attack bow build and I decided that's not necessarily what I want to play anymore. Um, so I swapped over to a damage over time build, but the damage over time build didn't really work as well because I was crit and that didn't work unless you take a node specifically for crit. So I went into full wisdom, which worked massively. It was fantastic. So. Let me go ahead and pop up and start explaining some more things here. So if you look at this weapon, this weapon has two damage types on material. So material simply means physical, rend, and toxic. Elemental means fire, frost, and lightning. That one we should know. And occult is sacred, shadow, and aether. Now this is important because when you get something that says plus occult resistance, it's saying sacred, shadow, and aether, right? Or if you get something that says material damage, it's giving you physical and rend. And the reason why I bring this up is because I know it can be a little confusing because you look at a node and you're like, oh, it gives material damage. What, what does material damage mean? So reading is a little important, Wilson. Um, you know, definitely read your skill tags and understand what's going on with your character. So to bring up another one, um, gems. You can actually gem your gear pretty much whenever you get it. Um, the reason why is you can actually remove the gems with very little penalty here. Um, very little penalty. You just simply put it in and remove it. It's like 2000 gold. It's not that big of a deal. Or you can do what I did and just you can just put your gear in your stash um, that you actually have gems on. And then when you need those gems, you can just boom them later. So these are one of the legendaries that I was talking about from the vendors. So I actually bought this chess piece from a side area vendor and it's perfect for me and I've been using it the whole entire way. So this is why I recommend doing side areas. They're rewarding, you get a lot of experience, you get items and you get a chance at a legendary if there's a vendor there, which is really, really cool. Also, when you first start, um, I couldn't find any weapons for my character. So what I recommend doing, remember how I kind of explained how you can reset this character? You can also reset this shop. So if you notice that like you, for some reason, cannot find a shoulder or, you know, whatever, you can actually just go to this guy, reset a few times, don't do it a lot, and just see what pops up. He's got some pretty good gear, surprisingly, you know? Because the thing is, you want to focus on your build, right? A lot of people get confused because they're picking up all these different types of drops and they're like, oh my God, I don't know what is an upgrade. It's got all these different stats on it. That's why I tell people just focus on, on what you're trying to do. You know, think of an idea that you want. Maybe you want to play an elemental based melee character, or you want to play an occult sorcerer, or you want to play, you know, a rend bow build. Get yourself an idea to start on and the game will be much less confusing because you can kind of look at stuff and prioritize it much easier. You know, a bow drops and you look at it and the total damage is, you know, a little higher than yours, but it's got no attack speed, it's got no damage property for you, it's got nothing for you, and, and then all of a sudden you can make the, the easy choice of like, oh, that's not really very good for me, even though it looks like it is, right? <clears throat> so on top of that, um, with the gems, the only thing you really need to pay attention to is basically what the gem is. So if you look here, it says like offensive one, two, three, defensive one, two, three, and support one, two, three. That means you need to put it in the correct spot or else 
well, I guess you can only put it in the correct spot, but you need to pay attention to what it gives you. So if you put this, for example, defensive three and defensive one, I can either make this be 204 shield or 12 lightning res, depending on which one I put it in. So that's something important to make sure that you don't get super, super confused about. So the other thing, um, I guess there's not really too much necessarily to talk about. Um, respecking is pretty nice, like I said before. There is an end game um, in Wilson. I haven't done too much end game, but I'll talk about what I know. So after you have completed the core campaign of Wilson, um, you get unlocks. I don't know if the mandate opens up then. I think the expeditions are actually opened up earlier. Basically an expedition and a mandate to my knowledge, it basically opens up like a random dungeon that you can go through and clear for rewards. If you press N, you'll notice that there's this gigantic board of productivity. TLDR, you use your resources to build stuff. This stuff buffs your town by unlocking more, either more vendors or upgrading what they sell. This, for example, unlocks your fifth slot. Very good, right? If you play this game long-term, this is something you for sure will be looking into. Now, after you have queued this up, I believe this is when you need to go run the expedition. And expeditions are pretty cool. You basically, uh, it's kind of like a map. You open it up, it's a new zone, and then you can buff the zone for additional rewards. So that's pretty cool. It's got replayability there as well. Then there is a crafting system as well. I haven't personally gotten involved in the crafting system yet, but you get these orbs. So let's use an, let's talk about this, right? Rerolls all magical effects when used on an item. It will consume all socketed gems to guarantee a magic effect whose power depends on the gems level and whose type is chosen randomly among all types of gems on the weapon or on this item. So this kind of seems like deterministic crafting, which is pretty unique as well. It's not just straight RNG. So I'm very happy about that. And then other than that, that's pretty much all that I can really get into. I hope that you guys enjoy yourself in Wilson. I hope that you guys find the game really fun. Let me know what type of builds you guys are gonna play and if you're gonna be playing multiplayer or not. Um, I guess technically there is one more thing to talk about, but I don't really know too much about this one. There is the primordial essence. Here we go. There's the aspect. So there's basically you have four different aspects. You have aspect of dawn, aspect of war, aspect of infinity, and aspect of flesh. These you will see pop up throughout your campaign. You press R to activate it, and then you basically have these four or five skills. You can also use them as a crowd control break, which is really cool. If you're like surrounded by mobs and you notice you have your bar up, you can just tap R and it will pop you into this evil, huge monstrosity to basically wreak havoc among anyone that is even within the vicinity of 100 miles of you. But yeah, that's pretty much about it. That, that pretty much concludes it now. So hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Like I said in the comments below, let me know what you guys are going to be playing since Wilson drops in about 30 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead over to my live stream and get started at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope this video helped you guys out. And thanks again, Wilson. See you guys all tomorrow.